Of course, Mary has been uh, the chronicler of Olympics and tennis, and you're, you're, you're too young to be in the Broadcasting <laughs> Hall of Fame, but apparently you're in the Hall of Fame, too. So um, how's quarantine, Mayor? Uh, I'm also a grandmother, Mike. My daughter, Rachel, had uh, a baby four months ago, so I'm, I'm a granny now. And let me tell you something, I am great at it. She lives about 20 minutes from me, so I get to hold Rhea and, and explain life to her and change. Oh, there's baby Rhea. That's my daughter. Rachel's 28 years old. Awesome. She was actually an intern at the 2012 Olympic Games in London. And we had just a remarkable time. And there's baby Rhea, who, as you can see, is already kind of judgmental. And, you know, it's kind of sizing up the situation. Are you really my grandmother? Is this what I'm really going to be dealing with? Yes, Rhea. Yes, you are. So that's been, I, I mean, she's the I, best I think, thing that's happened Rhea in 2020. That. Oh, Ray is, she's a genius. Oh, she could know, be the there, greatest there baby There have many good time. things, so. She's it, of course she is, for me. Because she has your influence, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to you and, and your you. daughter, Mayor. Um, boy, you know, th this has been such an odd time. Why don't we start with the Tokyo deal? Because this is really mm -hmm. the point where you've been already over to Tokyo a few times. Mm -hmm. You start thinking about those uh, exploration stories of uh, not just the athletes, but the place where the Olympics is held. And you, perhaps, yes. as well as anyone, has given us a sense of the place for the Olympics. What are you missing right now as we're not ready to do that this summer, hmm. hopefully next? You know, um, uh, Dick Ebersol, who used to run NBC Sports, he, he allowed me to run around with an amazing crew for the 2008 Beijing Games. And I had n never been to China and we brought back a couple of stories and he said, go get some more. So then we went all over the place and, and not just in Beijing, but uh, all we went to monasteries up in the clouds and all kinds of great stuff. Um, and in Tokyo, I was there, I think we talked about a year ago. Uh, I was from Japan. Um, yep. mm -hmm. I had already, yeah. I had already conquered sumo wrestling by then and uh, samurai sword making. And it was also cherry blossom season. I mean, it is a gorgeous country. It is a magnificent country uh, with great people, amazing food. So, I mean, I'm somebody who really, uh, this is going to sound parochial, but I happen to think planet Earth is the greatest of all the planets in all of the known universe. Uh, and I miss traveling around it. I mean, I've been doing that since I was a little kid. Yeah. So what I miss most, apart from the athletes and, and all the prep work that, that I happen to enjoy, I, I just miss traveling. I haven't, you know, I've been in, this is the longest I've ever been in one place since I was about 11 years old. Makes a lot of sense, too. One of our colleagues, I, and I forget who it is, otherwise I would name them, in an article that was uh, published by The Ringer, just talking about how sports broadcasting may change and be more of a remote um, undertaking, yeah. for lack of a better word, for the next year, if, if not longer. One of them said uh, so well that, as broadcasters, we have a job covering sports, and that job is essentially our passport to see America and, for some of us, see the world. And I'm just curious if you've had those thoughts, Mary, of are we ever going to get back to traveling like that again, not yeah. just as an industry, but as a society? Do, do you yes. have that internal conversation in your head every once in a while? Mike, I think about it all the time. I really have always enjoyed, you know, yeah. packing up and getting ready to go and I've been working one of the, I also work, uh, one of the networks I work for is Tennis Channel, and I've been doing remote stuff. Tennis Channel has become Tennis History Channel. Obviously, we haven't had any professional right, tennis right. to talk about. Um, and uh, you go back in time and you look at all the places you've, you've been to and covered and all the amazing uh, tennis matches you've gotten to call. And yeah, I wonder if that's ever going to come back in, in, in a real way. And, I, and the whole idea of fanless sports. Mike, you have to understand this about me. And maybe you feel the same way. My physical presence at sporting events affects the outcome of those events. Me being there, right? And I'm sure you've had the same. Me being there yes. and cheering on one person. I can't oh, tell you no. how many matches I've gotten John McEnroe yeah. through, for instance, over the I, my I truly <laughs> feel like I have those powers. And if I break eye contact or I go get a beer and come back and the game yeah. goes sideways, that's on different. me. It's different. It's all different. It's different. Yeah. I know it's, and I truly believe that. <laughs> why are you laughing? Don't, haven't you, don't you feel you've had that effect on the outcome of sporting events? 
No, no. I, I'm glad that you have. I've seen it happen with you, but it is not. I don't have the uh, the Carrillo superpowers. You you mentioned Johnny Mac, and uh, many people have known the story. You guys essentially grew up as somewhat neighbors and played tennis as kids and all the way through, including playing yeah. mixed doubles and Grand Slam events and winning and all that stuff. And I, gosh, I guess it's right about this time last year, Mayor, or maybe a week later, I, I got to sit with you two at the French Open. Yeah. And uh, three kids who grew up within about 10 miles of each other got to call the French Open on NBC. It was a little bit, it was a little bit of a throwback. It was a little bit of fun. But uh, I, I'm thinking about an event like that, Mary, that brings people, not just the players, but the fans from all over the world in the same yep. vein as the Olympics. And that's where I think a lot of us sometimes hit a stop sign before we go over that hurdle of sports will come back. It'll be fine. I mean, are, are we ever going to be in that place again when people from all over the world come to one spot, compete, and then go back to where they came from? I, I just, I'm having trouble seeing that at times right now. I'd, I join, I join your, your concerns. Um, and the thing about tennis is it is so international. It's not like you can easily regionalize my favorite sport because it's played all over the world and you bounce around from hard courts to clay courts to grass back to hard. Um, it, I think it's going to be very, very tough. You know, you and, you and I are supposed to be at the French Open at the end of September. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen. And if they, it happens, are there really not going to be fans? You, the, the physical footprint of Roland Garros, where the French Open is played, yeah, it's scheduled for the end of September yes. now instead of the end of May. Um, that footprint is, right. is its the smallest of the four majors, so they certainly can't have the same kind mm -hmm. of uh, attendance. you know. And tennis is different from uh, you know, the sports, uh, the, the bigger sports like the NBA and the NFL, where TV rights are huge and merchandising rights come after that and then comes attendance. In tennis... It's not the same kind of TV rights. It's not the same kind of merchandising. Um, attendance is key. So I really wonder, I really wonder what's going to happen. Uh, I, I hope for the best, but the idea that there are, and I don't want to get political here, but the idea that there are acceptable losses in life, just so that sports comes back on, I find very worrying that to me, that's like, People who aren't as troubled by gun violence deaths as they should be. I, I, normalizing death in any way, I think, is a very dangerous thing for any of us to do. Well said. Uh, one more tennis point, then I want to talk to you about dogs. Uh, <laughs> Roger Federer has the biggest profile in the sport, so he has the loudest voice. Do you see, maybe because of the economic realities of what's ahead, a little bit of this Federer been backstopped by Nadal in April is talking about if it's time for the men's and the women's tennis worlds to come together as one, because it might be a necessary for survival idea for the tennis tours. Right. I actually found this, uh, the way Roger poses, am I the only one thinking that no, that to me sounded very disingenuous and I love Roger, but Billie Jean King wanted that back in 1970. You know, when tennis turned pro, she just assumed right, right, that true. the men and women were going to be together. That was the assumption. And the men said, "Get out. we don't need you. We don't want you. Right. You know, um, so this has been going on for about 50 years. And so for Roger to bring it up like, hey, I've just had a great idea, um, was to me was silly. It, it's a very complicated process to try to, I, I, I liken it to the Godfather, where you got the five families, you know, <laughs> Every it's a turf war and everyone's mm -hmm. in their own silos and everyone wants right. to hang on to their piece of the pie. And, you know, uh, just as a casual example, uh, so there's the ATP and the WTA. Okay. That's there's, and then there's the ITF, the international tennis federation, and then there's four different majors. Right. Okay. So if you get them all in a right. room together and start saying, we want this and that do the majors, do they get four votes or one vote in that room? How does that work? And yeah, the ATP right now mm -hmm. has much a much bigger TV footprint than the WK. So does that mean they get do they get the show courts more? Do they get and so that and men play three out of five in the majors, which is why Center Court Wimbledon has two men's matches and one women's match every day. So now do you take three out of five out yeah. of the men's deal so that the women can get on the court as much? And do the women get the show courts as much? And there's on court coaching in women's tennis. So now will there be no on court coaching? in the non-majors or will the men at the, like, it's a big, big thing. I mean, this is a perfect time to do it because so, everything's quiet, but 
The right. idea of all those yeah, people coming say. together and agreeing, I, my only my only chance uh, to uh, my only sense of optimism is if they all walk out of that room aggravated, because that means that everybody won something. But if <laughs> and right. that to me is is the hallmark of a great meeting. If so, that someone's pissed about something, if everyone then all right, then we had a good meeting. <laughs> there was compromise. So pretty much what you're saying is, like The Godfather, this is not a one-act movie. We're going to need Tennis Comes Together 2 and 3. We're not just going to knock this out in one two-hour sitting. So well said. Be uh, Beverly Hills Dog Show. Let's end with something happy here, Mayor. I love dog shows. You know I love <laughs> dog shows, 8 o'clock, NBC Sunday night, the Beverly Hills Dog Show. What can you tell us that we have to look forward to on Sunday night with something you love being a part of these dog shows? <laughs> I know who won. I'm not telling you who. <laughs> Good. Um, I love Tell us something else shows. then. I love dogs. I have three of them myself. Love, My dogs are, all three of them are maroons. They would never be able to sit like this guy, like this gorgeous dog and stay still and trot around. And, and I mean, my dogs are morons. But uh, the Beverly Hills Dog Show was <laughs> great. It's, it's, we've only been covering it a couple of years. The National Dog Show has been on NBC for about 20 years. This has only been, I think this is our year four. It was spectacular. It, we, it happened that there are tremendous, I mean, there are about 2,000 dogs there. Um, kind of a surprise who won. I'm not going to let you know who. Um, okay. But dogs are amazing. There, there. there is no mammal on earth that comes in so many different shapes and varieties, and we're bred to do so many different things. So I'm very, very happy it'll be on this weekend. I'll tell you one and more Mary thing, Mary does Mike. the little behind the scenes. Go ahead, yeah. go ahead. Mm -hmm. I do the pay one of my dogs, Petey Boy, not terribly bright, a rescue. Yeah. When he hears my voice on TV, he goes around yeah. the TV looking for me. That's just not. Really? That's just, yeah, he's, in, he's an idiot. Yeah. See, I see the other, Mayor, I see the other side of that. I see just, <laughs> I'm sure well, you have he a hears your voice and he just it. responds to you. Well, yeah. that's, okay, that's another that's way to look at it. yin and yang that we all do. We, <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, um, thanks for a laugh. You know, it, the good news is I had a bunch of stuff prepared and got to none of it, which is, that's a conversation with Mary. So America gets to see what this is like all the time. I miss you. Great talking to you. Congratulations on being a grandma and uh, stay safe. Thank you, Mike. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.